At the Nuclear Energy Summit in 2000, eight nuclear power countries reached a consensus on six technological directions for future nuclear energy development, collectively known as fourth-generation nuclear energy technology. However, it was ultimately China from the East that led the development of these technologies. In September 2021, China announced the world's first commercial operation of fourth-generation molten salt reactor nuclear power technology with the trial operation of the Dwaim SR in Huawei, Gansu. This news stunned the global nuclear energy industry, with scientists calling it the ultimate energy solution for mankind before achieving nuclear fusion. The Dwaim SR technology originated in the United States and began research in the 1950s, which drew attention from countries around the world. However, due to technical problems, research was interrupted until China announced that it had overcome these technical challenges, sparking intense discussions in the global nuclear energy community. Previously, India had claimed to be a leader in thorium-based reactor technology, but failed to overcome the technical challenges of fourth-generation thorium-based nuclear power plants. Therefore, when China announced that it had overcome these challenges, the global nuclear energy community was surprised and impressed. China has achieved a leading position in thorium-based reactor technology, which can be traced back to the Oak Ridge National Laboratory's secret research on a nuclear-powered aircraft project during the Cold War period in the United States. The laboratory used a technology route called the Molten Salt Reactor, which is one of the types of thorium-based molten salt reactors that China is currently researching. The nuclear-powered aircraft project encountered a major turning point in 1957 as the Soviet Union and the United States successfully tested intercontinental ballistic missiles that had a longer range and faster speed, which could carry nuclear weapons for remote threats. This made the super-long-range nuclear threat of nuclear-powered bombers extremely awkward, leading the U.S. Department of Defense to decide to suspend the research. With the withdrawal of funding from the U.S. Department of Defense, the Oak Ridge Laboratory's Molten Salt Nuclear Reactor Project had to shift towards civilian use. The Molten Salt Reactor can use a variety of materials, among which thorium is the most feasible as a nuclear fuel. It is abundant in reserves, and the known reserves of thorium are enough for human use for thousands of years, and when combined with undiscovered resources, it could last for thousands more. One ton of thorium fuel can provide the same amount of energy as 200 tons of uranium material produced by a closed-loop process. Therefore, thorium is considered one of the fuels of the future, and economically, the prospects for thorium-based molten salt reactors are better than those of traditional uranium-based reactors. In 1965, the world's first civilian molten salt reactor was successfully born, with thorium fuel chosen by Oak Ridge National Laboratory as the nuclear fuel for the molten salt reactor. However, at that time, thorium-based molten salt reactor technology was not yet mature, with a power of only 2.5 megawatts, high startup costs, and problems such as corrosion resistance yet to be solved, belonging to a typical first-generation prototype experimental reactor. But the combination of thorium fuel and molten salt reactor proved the feasibility of molten salt reactors and countries around the world began to pay attention to this technology. China was no exception. In 1970, China launched the 728 project, focusing on thorium-based molten salt reactors for research and development. The following year, Oak Ridge National Laboratory achieved another breakthrough by completing the design of a 1GW thorium-based molten salt reactor. If built according to the design, thorium-based reactors could be the first to be developed for civilian use. However, in the context of the peak of the U.S.-Soviet Cold War, Oak Ridge National Laboratory shifted its research focus to uranium-based material nuclear reactors. This was because the U.S.'s nuclear needs were more concentrated on the production of nuclear weapons, for which uranium was the most important raw material. In contrast, thorium could only gradually evolve into uranium-233 and could not be used for nuclear weapon production. Therefore, the U.S. gave up the safer and more economically efficient thorium-based molten salt reactor. In 1976, 
the molten salt reactor program was officially halted. The Soviet Union also stopped research on thorium-based molten salt reactors, and the Chernobyl nuclear accident caused a stagnation in their nuclear power plant development. Other countries also lost interest in this technology as a result. Over the next 40 years, practical experience proved that the initial choice was not the right one. Nuclear power plants based on uranium as raw material have undergone three updates, but their safety has always been a major issue. There have been numerous serious nuclear leaks around the world, and the cost of preventing nuclear leaks has skyrocketed. In 1999, the U.S. Department of Energy's Office of Nuclear Energy proposed the initiative to establish fourth-generation nuclear power plants and called on countries to pay attention to nuclear safety issues. More than 100 global experts, led by the United States, evaluated 130 nuclear reactors, hoping to select nuclear reactors that are stable, economical, safe, reliable, and with non-proliferation, physical protection, and safety being the top priorities. Through the evaluation, experts found that the molten salt reactor, which had been abandoned by the United States itself, met all the current requirements. The thorium-based molten salt nuclear reactor in the molten salt reactor is also the easiest path to achieve. Traditional nuclear power plants generate heat from nuclear reactions and then turn water into steam, which drives turbines to generate electricity. It also produces extremely high pressure inside the reactor, which is a huge challenge for the nuclear reactor. If there is a problem, it could cause water vapor to leak out of a broken pipeline or even expose nuclear fuel. The structure of the molten salt reactor is similar to that of a traditional nuclear power plant, but its nuclear fuel and coolant are both liquid molten salts, so there is no risk of melting and high pressure from water vapor. Even in extreme situations, because the fuel molten salt is liquid, it can flow directly into the emergency storage tank under the reactor through the emergency system without worrying about gas leaks. Therefore, the molten salt reactor is safer than traditional nuclear power plants. In addition, during the fission process, the thorium element does not produce raw materials that can be used to produce nuclear weapons. Therefore, in terms of preventing nuclear proliferation, molten salt reactors have advantages over traditional plutonium-based reactors. It is precisely because of these advantages that scientists have rediscovered the technology they once abandoned, believing it is the ideal direction they have been tirelessly pursuing. The development of nuclear power has undergone many iterations, and today, the demands of different countries for power and cost are vastly different from those of the last century. Therefore, past designs in the United States are no longer applicable, and a comprehensive new study is necessary to tackle the thorium-based molten salt reactor. Among them, new nuclear fuel requires a re-examination of production techniques because the high melting point of oxidized thorium increases the difficulty of producing nuclear fuel. In addition, material issues are also a challenge because radiation damages the corrosion resistance of materials after the reactor produces high temperatures and the molten salt reactor reacts strongly with air and water, generating high corrosion. Solving these problems is extremely complex, and almost all problems need to be redesigned and studied. Faced with these difficulties, some countries have abandoned this technology altogether. Two countries stand out in terms of thorium-based molten salt reactor technology, China and India. In 1954, India's famous nuclear physicist Hami Baba proposed a three-stage nuclear energy plan and received support from then Prime Minister Nehru due to India's abundance of thorium resources that were easy to extract. Baba designed a progressive development path for India with thorium as the ultimate nuclear fuel. Thus, when other countries suspended the construction of thorium-based nuclear reactors, India began building nuclear reactors with thorium fuel as the main component. When molten salt reactors were chosen as the next generation nuclear technology, the Indians were delighted. Their nuclear energy community placed great importance on the leading position of thorium-based molten salt reactors. In 2007, the head of India's Babur Atomic Research Center announced that by 2020, India would be the only country in the world to use thorium to produce nuclear energy on a large scale. 
Some friends mistakenly believe that the thorium-fueled reactors, already built in India, are thorium-based molten salt reactors. In fact, they have not reached the standards of international fourth-generation nuclear power plants, and some are only at the level of first-generation reactors. However, this has not affected India's confidence in thorium-based molten salt reactors. However, in 2021, a Chinese team emerged and surpassed the United States and India by completing the technical verification and test reactor construction of thorium-based molten salt reactors before India. In the 1970s, the global energy crisis occurred, and China was also affected by the restriction of electricity use. Therefore, the research project for nuclear power plants was launched in 1970. In the initial stage of the project, molten salt reactors were chosen as the technology breakthrough route, and a zero-power cold-state molten salt reactor was built, which achieved criticality. However, at that time, the Chinese nuclear industry had not yet started, and many technical problems could not be solved, so the research had to be stopped. Later, the project was changed to build a hydrogen water reactor, which had lower technical difficulty, and became China's first nuclear power plant, the Kinshin Nuclear Power Plant. Chinese people have always attached great importance to fourth-generation nuclear power technology and have made development plans for each route. China has abundant thorium resources that can be used for thousands of years, and molten salt reactors have flexible siting options that can be built in large quantities in inland China, making them more economical, safer, and more flexible. Therefore, China has no reason not to prioritize the development of thorium-based molten salt reactors. How does China research thorium-based molten salt reactors? The project has two directions, solid fuel molten salt reactors and liquid fuel molten salt reactors. The solid fuel molten salt reactor is similar to traditional nuclear power plants with relatively lower safety and technical difficulty, while a liquid fuel molten salt reactor is the true fourth generation nuclear power with higher technical difficulty and safety. Therefore, the liquid molten salt reactor is the leading project for the next 10 years. However, technically, the two are a progressive relationship. To master the technology of the liquid reactor, it is necessary to first master the technology of the solid reactor. Therefore, China has formulated two plans for synchronous development at the strategic level. Both are divided into three stages. First, building a 2 megawatts test reactor, then a 10 megawatts test reactor, and finally, a 100 megawatts test reactor that can be widely promoted. These plans are led by the Chinese Academy of Sciences and involve the participation of multiple universities and research institutions. The Chinese team adopted a staggered approach to construction. While building a 10 megawatts solid fuel molten salt reactor, they also simultaneously constructed a 2 megawatt liquid fuel molten salt reactor. As the solid fuel reactor expanded to 100 megawatts, the liquid fuel reactor advanced to 10 megawatts, and finally, the team focused on overcoming the technical challenges of a 100 megawatt liquid fuel molten salt reactor. This approach allows for the accumulation of technology and talent while advancing the overall strategy, avoiding delays in the overall strategy caused by talent cultivation. To cultivate talent, the Chinese team also engaged in in-depth cooperation with foreign countries, such as the United States. Through such cooperation, China has accumulated 350 full-time research personnel in just three years, and the team has expanded to over 500 members in five years, and to date, he team has over a thousand members. The Chinese team has successfully overcome the technical challenges of liquid fluoride thorium reactors through reasonable technical planning and talent cultivation. In 2016, the thorium-based molten salt reactor nuclear energy system team completed systematic technical verification, becoming the leader in the development of international thorium-based molten salt reactors. In 2018, construction of the thorium-based molten salt reactor nuclear energy system officially began. These achievements could not have been possible without the deep collaboration between the Chinese team and global scientists and the accumulation of 350 full-time research talents. After years of research and development, 
China has made significant progress in liquid fluoride thorium reactor technology, becoming a leading project for future nuclear power technology. As of May 2021, the main construction of the thorium-based molten salt reactor nuclear energy system has been completed and it was officially put into trial operation in September of the same year. China has declared, in an almost perfect manner, that the future of nuclear energy will be led by China, surpassing the two major molten salt reactor powers, the United States and India. However, the current molten salt reactor projects are still in the experimental stage, and there is still a long way to go before the final goal is reached. Only when they pass all the verifications and truly begin to be promoted, can they be considered a real success. If the relevant technical problems can be solved, China can not only eliminate the threat of power shortage, but also build nuclear power plants deep in the mainland as needed, avoiding the risk of clustering them in coastal areas. With China's rigor and technology, it is certain that the commercial application of the thorium-based molten salt reactor in China is not too far away.